Hey guys, a quick video today, uh, just a simple edit. I'm off to Ireland tomorrow. I've got a group tour going. Uh, I've got a fair few riders and I've got a, a backup van and stuff. And originally I was going to be right driving the van, but um, with the arrival of the new 452 or 450, I thought I would um, try and ride the Himalayan. So I've got Ben, a friend of mine, who's going to drive the van just as a backup because we're doing some camping and things like that. So it's a full loop of Ireland, probably about 12, 1400 miles over eight days, full wide Atlantic way, all on tarmac, so no trail riding. Um, good mix of bikes, big bikes, some 12, not a 1290, we've got 800s, we've got 650s, we've got Himalayans, we've got uh, 350 Classics. And um, with the weather looking good, it's, it's just a, I felt it was a great opportunity to try the Himalayan 452 on a tour, on a trip. Uh, not necessarily, maybe not an adventure, because there's no trails, but do as an adventure need to have trails to be an adventure? No, not really. But I thought it's a really good opportunity to, to put some miles on the bike and do it in an environment that is day-to-day -day riding, mixture of terrain, mixture of paces and, and everything else that goes with it. So I'm just doing a quick oil change on the bike. It's only got 140 miles on it. I got out on it today, did a few more. Uh, so it is a premature oil change and obviously I'm not taking it back to the dealer. So possibly a, a warranty, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, warranty has been voided by doing that. But uh, yeah, it just seems like a good opportunity to take advantage of the Irish trip and, and, and put some miles on the 452, 450 to see what it's really like. Today I was out on it. I did some mainly road riding over at Exmoor, very familiar roads, some faster stuff and things. But I'm, I'm taking the engine gently. I'm not doing more than, I'm finding 58 miles an hour is four and a half thousand revs and it feels really comfortable at that. So, you know, people are talking about vibrations. Well, at the minute I can't say as I'm experiencing that and it feels to me like it is sitting at 60 without too much, well, without any buzz. And I've got the rubbers removed from the foot pegs. So, you know, if anything, it should enhance the vibrations if there were any, but at the minute, I can't say that, uh, there, that there are. There's definitely more power uh, and more flow. There's more aggression. The bike is more aggressive than the 411. I think that's, you know, clear today. I was carrying more pace. I was riding faster. It was it was it was dragging me along faster. The bike was was covering ground quicker, and I think it put you in the mood to cover ground quicker. So it's quite a different mentality, a different psychology of the bike. Uh, you know, a different mindset that the bike puts you in over the 411. I sort of came to the conclusion that. The 450 is like the 411 on steroids. You know, it's pumped everything up. It's it's inflated everything. It's lengthened it. It's it's made it slimmer. It's made it faster. Made it brake better. Made it more aggressive. You know, and I, I guess we always reach that crossroads where there's good and bad. So steroids makes you stronger. If I were taking steroids, it'd make me stronger. Make me faster. Make me quicker. Would it make me more aggressive? Would it make, make me less pleasant to be around? And that's kind of where, at the crossroads I'm at with this. I like that it was, it's, there's definitely more aggression. They've set it up to be a rider's bike, a grab it by the balls and, and ride it type of bike. You can tell that the people who, who've engineered this and set it up are keen riders. They want to make progress. Uh, and it, and it's, that, that's the characteristic that's sort of started to shine through already, even this, even in 140 miles or so, I can, I can sense that. Um, but then there's the other side of the steroid debate, which makes you a bit of a, an arsehole and makes you not as much, not as pleasant to be around and, and, and a bit uptight. And uh, that's kind of possibly what I think with this. It, it, when you went out on a Himalayan, it was a soothing, relaxing experience. The bike calmed you down. You, you entered a different world, a different, it was a teleportation device to a sort of a more charming, laid back, more gentle, uh, way alive, really. It was a time capsule, I would say, or or, or a time machine. And uh, this is this is very different. And I think that's going to appeal to some people now who want a more aggressive riding package, and equally those who like the slow plodding nature of the old one. I, I think they're going to miss it with this new one. Uh, I did a few trails, familiar trails, some rocky trails. I didn't get any GoPro footage because I was just out riding for myself today. Um, and what I noticed is, it, it does. It is a heavier bike. You can feel it. You, you can sense that ooh, it's not as suck, sucked down, suckered down to the ground. Uh, it's not as stable, as secure, as planted, as, as, as confidence-inspiring as the old one. Capable, but confidence-inspiring, maybe not so much. So, if there was a debate as to whether which one is better on road or off road. Hands down, the 411 is a better off-road bike. Maybe it's not as fast. Maybe it's not as technically aggressive or capable. Maybe it isn't as capable, ultimately. 
but it doesn't inspire the same confidence as the old one, that sort of sure-footed reassurance, which means I would put a, an absolute novice trail rider on it, on the 411, and they would conquer trails, no problems. I wouldn't put them on this. I think this is the other end of the spectrum. This is the bike that you put people on when they've got better at trail riding, whereas the 411 was the bike that you put people on when they weren't in any way skilled at trail riding. So an interesting um, discussion in my mind already developing as to what this bike is. I think it is Himalayan on steroids, and that's going to tick boxes, and it's going to untick boxes depending on what type of person you are, what type of bike, um, type of rider you are. But at 60 mile an hour, it's smooth. That's, that's one thing I, could, I would counter those suggestions that it is buzzy. At the moment, I don't find it to be buzzy. Obviously, it's, it's a low mileage engine and I'm taking it easy and I'm not revving it high. Maybe when you start getting up to 70, maybe those, that buzz becomes intrusive. What, what, it, what it also lacks actually is wind protection. You really notice the exposure on the chest and in the helmet. Actually, it's probably the most buffety, blowy bike um, I've, I've ridden for a long time, including the Triumph 400X actually. Uh, even with molded earplugs and a good quality helmet, I will still get a lot of, ter a lot of noise. Um, and that's interesting, isn't it? We've gained power to make us go quicker, but actually the bike is no longer as soothing at those speeds. So it's almost restricted. The, 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 the setup of the cockpit area has restricted the power that had been increased with this new one. Whether that new touring screen you know, remedies all that, I, I don't know. So it's, it's early days, um, but it comes back to it. Pros, there's pros and cons to this over the 411, but you know what? If it, if it was me just wanting a Himalayan to do a mixture of road and a dabble in a bit of trail riding, I wouldn't even hesitate, just buy one, of the, buy the old one, 3,800 pound. There's not enough in it, not enough in it, you know. Um, there's too many pros and cons that, that equal out. So at the minute, I'm enjoying it. I, I want to explore, I want to see what it's capable of, but I can still find so many reasons why you just should stick to the 411, you know. Actually, I come home and come back to the unit and I sat on the 411, Having sort of piloted this down the, the rocky, choppy stones and sort of enjoyed it, but also been a bit edgy. And I sat on the 411 and went, oh, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a more primitive, but more relaxing beast. Still capable, you know, still capable. So, and I also came to a conclusion. Is this the right bike? And time will tell. Should, him, should Royal Enfield have answered the call for the 650 Himalayan, which so many people wanted, which would have been great. I think that would have given it the legs to sit at 75, to sit at 80, to give it the brawn that people want uh, from a, a mid-capacity adventure bike, which this might lack in being a single. So should they have done that, the Super, super Himalayan with the 650 Twin, and at the same time, should they use the amazing 350 single CC engine in the Meteor and the Hunter to build a flying flea trail bike, like a little... Trials trail bike, something that is light, manageable, low-seated, easy to ride, that is perfect for those people who, want to, who are wanting to dabble in the trail riding and, 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 and back road exploration, which, was, which the Himalayan was always so good at. So is this the right product? There'll be many reasons why they've decided on this single platform to try and tick both trail and touring options. There'll be a reason, whether it's be emissions or future development, etc. who knows. But as I, as I wrote it there, I thought, mm, how many boxes is this ticking? It does this fall, fall down the crack in the sofa, whereby on either cheek, there were people wanting a lighter trail bike, and on the other cheek, people who are wanting a more mature, a more brawny, a more smooth touring adventure bike. This is in the middle. This is in the book crack. 